I mean, you guys actually play music, you play instruments. So what was it like actually doing more of a digital based or, or more of a program based sort of music? Like, were you doing house music differently? I'm, I'm curious how you were actually performing it. Oh, yeah. I mean, we were doing electronic. And, and, and interesting enough, we um, because Detroit is kind of like the home of techno. Yeah. I mean, you know, oh, yeah. I, you know, Kevin Saunderson, Derek May. Yep. One uh, one Atkins, those guys are like the Belleville three, and and so and that's right here in the Detroit area. And actually, it was um, Kevin Saunderson's studio that mm-hmm. we spent a lot of time down there hmm. and talking to those guys. So I know like Underground Resistance, uh, guy by the name of um, Mad Mike, Mike Banks, he's actually an awesome you know multi instrumentalist. And so like we had actually pulled them in to do a remix for us, and like when he came down to the studio, he you know, looked at my guitars and stuff. He said, you need to sell all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Get rid of it. Right. But the thing that was eye opening for me in that whole thing was, um, a, it, you know, it, it taught me how groove based that music was. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I, I really started to learn a little bit more about playing, playing keyboards and getting better at that. Hmm. And then number two, it, taught me to respect the equipment that I had Mm -hmm. because those guys taught me that the equipment that that task MTSR8 was enough to make a record. on. Yes. Mm -hmm. That, that you had more than enough equipment to make a record and to sell that record, you know, and, and that you can go and get it mastered right here in Detroit. And then you can sell this thing all around the world. And I think that helped us because we were from Detroit. So when we call up the distributor, they took it. Right. (laughs) Yeah. They were like, Oh, you, Right. You yeah. Know? I, it, Detroit name just it helped yeah. us sell yeah. whatever we had to, you know, sell yeah. because, you know, it, everything out of Detroit was just thought to be hot. Yeah. And, you know, and after a while, you know, I started kind of sampling a lot of their records yeah. and, you know, using those sounds. And then we kind of, as usual, our own sound kind of peeked through. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, yeah. so um, and, and doing what we did, we still kind of had our own little sound with Plus, it, we we you know? wouldn't follow rules like we were supposed to because yeah. the records were supposed to be white labels or black label yeah and we put a picture we had spent all this money to have this photographer take these pictures <laughs> yeah i was not gonna not put that picture on them <laughs> and so sure enough that became like but at first they were like no you can't do that you can't do that because that's you know you're messing it up oh, but yeah. after a while that became the look you know what i'm saying that i saw other people doing it right but i'm saying we were not following the rules when we did that so we couldn't follow the rules right <laughs> again yeah. so whatever and you and you said that you were learning or you started working more with the programming this the things and realizing yeah. what you could do with the music you you yeah. produce a lot of your own music nowadays right you don't necessarily all go into this yeah. all of it okay yeah. that's what yeah. i thought yeah yeah. Always. It's always been. Us. Yeah. You know, the other thing about the electronic part that was kind of helpful, especially only having eight tracks, is that to the extent that I can run stuff off tape, because like I would sync things up to my TSR8, you know, real to real. Yeah. Uh, with the Atari. I love and that you're so, using a real to real, by the way. All right. Awesome. <laughs> so I would, you know, I sync that up. So I'd have my drums running through MIDI. I have like the keys running through MIDI. I could do like sample vocals and run those through MIDI and sync that up with the tape track. Then that way I was able to get additional tracks without mm-hmm. actually having to physically drop them to tape. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and then, you know, once that came on, so then we got the DAT machine after yeah. that. I mean, mm-hmm. that was yet another like, wow, you know, now we can make these really good sounding masters. Yeah. You know, um, so I, again, it was sort of like, it, it was it was a good marriage to me between what was kind of like the analog old way of doing stuff along with the digital way of doing stuff. Yeah. So I, you know, early on, it kind of just prepped me up for that. So that by the time we got to, you know, using, I think I used to use Cakewalk for, uh, I think it was Cakewalk what, what, for the, for the, for the, um, the PC. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was using that. And so once I was able to get audio in there, it was just a, a, a easy transition. I love how doing. everybody yeah. started out using Cakewalk if they were around during the time that it was out. Like yeah. I tried using yeah. it. I had the hardest time wrapping my head around Cakewalk when I first started yeah. using it. It was so <laughs> like I gave up on it for a very long time. 